Hi, my name's Steven. I'm a musician and I'm a teacher. Today, I would like to share with you what I think is the best piece of free music software. Whether you're a professional musician, you're just starting and learning to write your first melodies, or you're a music teacher. So this is MuseScore, a notation software which was released in 2011 and has hugely disrupted the previous Kings of Software finale, which was released in 1988, and Sibelius, which first came out in 1993. Here's why you want to use it. So notation software, like MuseScore, allows you to write beautiful sheet music. So if you're already creating music, this is just a part of the process, uh, and if you're new to it, creating this representation of your understanding, uh, is both great for your learning and, frankly, it's just fun. So I and a lot of other people think that MuseScore is the best option to start with and, to be frank, in this day and age, you might not ever need any other software. First off, you might start with MuseScore because it's free. So for comparable software from competitors, you're probably looking at around $600. Second, you might get MuseScore because it can basically do everything its competitors can do. It might be missing a couple features, but then with other features, it can do some things you might imagine doing better. I know no shortage of professional musicians where their subscription for their old notation software ran out or they lost the serial number and they looked at it and I thought, hey, do I want to pay this much for that software again? And they look at MuseScore and they think, Man, I really don't need to because MuseScore does everything I need. MuseScore is also the most downloaded and the most used notation software in the world right now. Uh, by a long shot, this has been the case for several years. So you can trust in that vote of confidence from the biggest user base of this kind of software. And if you have any problems at any point, there are a lot of people to ask questions to, a lot of forums, um, a lot of places to reach out. So the other really great thing with MuseScore is how you share online with it. So MuseScore just has a better system for sharing online than basically any other notation software. Uh, and it's got this larger community of people doing it, so people are creating and sharing, and you can look at your friends' creations, they can look at yours, not just your friends, but anyone on the internet. Uh, and that is really useful in a lot of ways. One of the more useful ways too is like, hey, let's say I want to make an arrangement of a tune. Well, do I want to start from scratch? Do I want to have to like put in every note? Uh, so hey, let's say I've got uh, whatever pop tune and uh, I want to make my own version. Okay, well, it would take time to put in all the notes. But you could just take something that's already done online and take someone else's version and say, hey, well, this is good, but like I want to change it and make my own things, or I need to write it in a certain way that works for me, or, uh, or whatever. Um, and then you could just start, instead of with a blank canvas, start with a canvas that's got something in it. So uh, a lot of the notes already input, a lot of the chords input, and then you just change it so it works for you or for your group. Uh, now in the past that used to be 100% free, however, uh, copyright, okay, so you might have to pay for the pro features to do this in some capacity now because the people who originally wrote that song, well, they should probably be paid. So uh, let's try not to uh, perpetuate some starving artist cycle and uh, let's pay people for the work they've done. Finally, the other thing with MuseScore that is just amazing about it is it is improving so quickly. I think quicker than any other notation software. I still use Sibelius quite a bit. Uh, I've become comfortable with some of the ways it works, uh, and I think there's some things that maybe it still does better, but every single time I open MuseScore, I'm amazed. It just, it just seems like there's a new version, and it's gotten better, and there's cool things it can do. Uh, the, the layout is better organized, you can find things in a nicer, easier way. Uh, also, hey, look at this piano playback feature. I haven't seen that on any other notation software, so uh, when I hadn't opened it up for a couple months, I, I turned it on, wow, look at this new thing, like this is, this is amazing. Okay, so there's two things you should do right now. First, you should get to music making as quickly as possible. Step one, you have to go and download MuseScore. Go to musescore.org and download.
Then of course you want to install the software, so just click next on everything, get through as quick as possible. Then when you're finished installing, it looks like the program will just automatically open for you. Uh, but if it doesn't, or any time later, just double click on the icon and you can get going. At the start center, we're going to click create new score because we just want to start making music as quickly as possible. We'll give the tune we're writing a name. So if we're a trumpet player, maybe my awesome trumpet song. Then write your name because you're the composer. So. In this case, awesome trumpet player! Then, choose the instruments you want in your tune, so maybe just start with one. And since we're an awesome trumpet player, we'll obviously choose the trumpet, which is a brass instrument, and this is trumpet in B flat. Next, you have to choose the key signature. So if you are new to music making, this might not mean very much to you right now, but if you're a trumpet player or really any of the other band instruments, it's probably easiest if you choose the key of B flat. So that looks like two of those lowercase Bs there, but there could be other keys depending on a teacher you might have, maybe the key of F or E flat. Anyways, if you play piano, probably you like the key of C, which is the people's key, all the white notes on the piano. Anyways, just choose a key and start. So the last thing you have to do before you start writing is to choose your time signature. So a time signature says how the rhythm is divided in your music. So the most common time signature, which you should probably just pick right now, is 4-4 four, four time. So almost everything you hear on the radio, like the vast majority of everything in Western music is 4-4 four, four time. That means there's four quarter notes in a measure. So that kind of sounds like on drums, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, a one, two, three, four, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. Anyways, just start with 4-4. Four, four. Okay, so now we've got our document open and we're going to click on this little note head here to start inputting notes. Then we can just start clicking anywhere on the staff to put in our notes. We can also start typing on our keyboard. So the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and that's the end of our musical alphabet. We could also take a electronic piano, a little MIDI keyboard, and if we have the right attachment, we can put it in and we can just start typing using a piano like a keyboard. So, so many ways to put in notes. So now you just gotta start typing and start making music. Click, click. Okay, we're double clicking on the icon, opening Muse Score one more time, and we're back at the start center. So I said there's two things we have to do right away as we begin with our music making journey and Muse Score. The second thing is that we should go search for music that we think is cool. So if we're a cool trumpet player, maybe we're gonna go look for some cool trumpet music. Or maybe you could just go looking for Disney princess songs because, you know, that's cool too. The other thing you can do is look up sheet music straight from your browser. You don't even need to have MuseScore installed on your computer. So what's the biggest limitation of notation software like MuseScore? Well, it's that it's not a different type of software. So notation software is not a DAW. It's not a digital audio workspace. So notation software normally won't get the high quality recording sounds that you will record into a digital audio workstation, uh, either with real instruments or input with virtual instruments. However, this might be changing. Right now, there's huge growth in virtual instruments and also how they connect with digital audio workstations, and also notation software. So, at this moment in time, there's increasingly recording of individual notes of individual musicians from orchestras and other professional environments around the world. And then these notes uh, become virtual notes for virtual instruments, uh, which then can be put into digital audio workstations, or maybe now more increasingly we'll see notation software. So right now, MuseScore version 3.6 does not connect with virtual instruments. However, it has been said that MuseScore version 4 will. So if you want better sound out of a notation software like MuseScore at this moment in time, actually the better options are still Finale, Sibelius, and Dorico, 
where now they integrate with a thing called Note Performer, which not only uses virtual instruments, but uses artificial intelligence to make them respond in better ways. If you're new to music making though, you really shouldn't worry about any of this. You should just start making stuff. Start writing music, just get going, click, click, press all the buttons, make it happen. In the past, there used to be huge entry barriers to music making and creating in general. Things just cost money. Myself, for example, I play this instrument called the marimba, which is huge and difficult to move, and uh, it's a long story how I got into it. But then I think, like, why do I play this huge and difficult thing to move when I could have all the sounds of an orchestra played by this on a digital audio workstation? So, the paywalls and the barriers to music making and creating are either down or coming down. So, get out there and make cool stuff.